With only two dominant diamond, I mean where the ball is hitting mostly, very mostly two diamonds. Occasionally it can hit uh, some other diamonds, but uh, two diamonds are the most dominant ones. When playing which of two diamonds is the best to observe, it's really irrelevant. We can use the one or the other one. I suggest always to use one which getting the most hits because this approach to gain advantage from both of the diamonds works uh, really only, uh, not only, but better with the slower rotor speeds. On the other diamonds, uh, hits may not be so accurate. Therefore, it's always better to target diamond as a primary one that getting more skits to get more skits properly predicted and then the other diamond is just giving uh, more help. In this example you can see the ball is uh, a diamond uh, above number 24 uh, and then I have another diamond where is uh, number 27. Uh, as I said I can use any of them. I'll use um, uh, this one where is number 27 of my uh, main diamond. Uh, reason for that is because I'll later on in explanation include a third diamond which is positioned above number 15. And I like uh, my main observation diamond to be in middle. Uh, of course, if it is getting uh, the highest amount of hits. So let's say we are trying to predict uh, when ball is going to hit this diamond uh, and we are estimating or using uh, special processes to get uh, when the ball is spinning, when it's, uh, it has uh, five remaining rotation before then it drops. So we need to identify six ball rotation and then ball will spin around and uh, finally it will hit one of these diamonds as we said that this is diamonds that getting the hits now let's assume instead of five rotations ball is spinning and instead of five rotation it makes uh, four rotations and one quarter so this is that uh, position and after that the ball will travel all the way like three quarter of the wheel to hit this diamond here which is positioned currently about number 27 so we can see that uh, at this diamond if ball really hits at that point this diamond and that this diamond is number 24 and uh, if we go forward in slow motion so the ball is making that final Three quarter of rotation, Oops, a little bit back, and when it reaches to this diamond, we can see that again number 24 is there. It depends of rotor speed, 24 maybe here or here, but it's wherever it is, it's like reasonable, reasonably close. From this experiment, we learned that uh, regardless if the ball makes a uh, remaining four and quarter rotations or five rotations there will be same result under the ball so if for example this diamond is um, obse diamond we observe as a main diamond and if that diamond is grouping um, 100 milliseconds different ball speed range for example ball speed range from 1200 to 1300 milliseconds hitting this diamond then because nothing is hitting here and let's say this diamond also grouping about 100 milliseconds speed range uh, that all together makes the range from 1200 to 1400 because 1200 to 1300 and then this one from 1300 to 1400 that's like um, 200 milliseconds uh, time frame where if we can identify particular moment during the spin uh, we know that we will get a good results regardless if the ball ends up at this diamond or three quarter of rotations earlier at this diamond 
Now we can look what will happen if the ball after five rotations doesn't hit the diamond. So it, since we said this diamond accumulates uh, getting hits from all ball speeds from 12 to 1300, what if the ball uh, uh, speed is uh, per rotation, I'm talking about time per, per rotation is uh, like uh, 1150, so that ball will have more force and it will pass this diamond, so if we go forward we can see it's coming to this diamond again, but this is now after five and quarter rotations, now you, we can see the result doesn't match because uh, it is um, a one quarter of rotation extra, but if we continue going all the way to this diamond here, then we can see that 24 it's there again. So we can look at it different. For example, if these two diamonds are the only two dominant diamonds, we can uh, apply same. For example, we can observe this diamond, which is second diamond from the uh, side where ball is coming, and uh, because it's two diamonds mostly dominant, so this one is not in game now, we can now look, uh, okay, we will target this diamond, or we will target when ball is like a three or three up to three quarter of rotation uh, stronger. So, uh, or if we look previous case, then we look this diamond, which is first diamond from the ball direction. Then we looked oh, when that diamond hits and when the ball is three quarter of rotation slower or have less strength so it makes the three, three quarter of rotation less. Since that works all together well, now we, if we look all of these three diamonds together, we, if we play at the middle one, regardless um, how we play, we still can have uh, advantage from this diamond and this diamond. Um, of course now our three diamonds are involved, we will have advantage when ball is um, three quarter of rotation shorter or three quarter of rotation longer, but in between of that uh, when is quarter of rotation shorter or quarter of rotation longer, the results will not match. I'll talk about that um, later, uh, explain it in the posts on the forum. Let's go back again to these two diamonds. So, if we said that this diamond here groups 1200 to 1300 milliseconds per rotation ball speed range, and this one from 13 to 14, it meaning from, uh, all the way from 1200 to 1400 uh, milliseconds per rotation ball speeds will hit one of these diamonds. So if uh, we setting roulette computer to predict on that way there is, as I described at forum, few kinds, few ways how to do it, but one of the ways um, setting a type, time frame, we would set it to 1200 uh, lower limit than 14 and then play a clock to the ball and when ball is within that range the computer identifies that uh, ball has a particular speed it is within range and knows the remaining time is 5 not time, amount of uh, rotations is 5 and of course there is a time for how long uh, the ball will complete that 5 rotation, therefore the computer would be able to calculate the uh, rotor movement. Uh, or a visual prediction player trying to predict it, he would basically do the same. He will use his way how to identify when ball is uh, within that particular range. 
So if time can be precisely set and if everything can be done perfectly, the, we would only gain uh, proper hits on these two diamonds. Uh, but have in mind that like 1200 and 1405 rotations to the end of spin is relatively late in some situations. So if the player wants to uh, predict it earlier, then that uh, like exponentially the time frame exponentially reducing, which makes it uh, harder and harder uh, when he wants to predict it earlier. But then uh, kicks uh, the other part, what I was explaining, like uh, taking advantage of all three of diamonds. But that's like kind of science, and I'll slowly, slowly start explaining it uh, at forum. So you can uh, always uh, follow up what I'm writing there.